liked how we moved the ball, I just didn't like how we finished. You know, I mean, you get down there on the first drive, uh, and second down, we threw like a shallow concept to Dane, and we kind of, Dev was a little quick on it, bypassed it. Um, we go to third down, that's the one that's to Tavion, kind of on the side, uh, he pulled him away. You know, we, we make that play, we're in the end zone. And then, you know, we, wor we were working a situation. You know, if you were to tell me we were to go down the field, if we're Kentucky offense, coming into Kroger Field, first drive of the game, you go down, bang, 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 and kick a field goal, are you, are you upset? No, you just say, hey, let's go. Great point, you got points, right? But instead, we worked the situation, went for it on fourth down, don't get it, and we're a little deflated. You know, you're a little bit, dang, man, what happened? Well, shoot, we just went bang, bang, bang down the field, and we took three. That's good football, it's okay, right? And then once come when we go back inside, we kept going down the field, down the field, and we just missed a couple things in the red zone. Um, you know, offensively, that ultimately is the difference between touchdowns and field goals. And uh, that was a little disappointing. Some of that, the having to get the hard yards when, you know. It's I starting. threw it more. You know, like I wasn't running the ball much in this first scrimmage. You know, like I'm trying to keep the backs clean, want to work on the pass game. Obviously, the quarterbacks aren't truly live, so you can kind of push some things down the field. So we threw it probably a lot more than I would normally in the red zone. And we were just trying to work some of our red zone pass game. And um, it was some things knowing that in the red, red area, things happen fast. Things happen fast so from a quarterback standpoint, your reads, your progressions, they all got to be a little bit faster down there. And those are just some things that we, we got cleaned up and can work on. And I was pleased though with the guys up and down the field moving it. And then it got a little sloppy at the end, which I wasn't too pleased with. You have so many tight ends. How yeah. many of those guys can you yeah, I think as many of them that can functionally handle it, really. I mean, you, you love to say, you know you got Bates, you know you got Caddis, you know you got Isaiah Cummings, right? Dingle's getting back, hopefully healthy, you know, and Kamara Anderson's a young kid that you trust. And um, they're, they're just as much as they can handle, the more we'll do. And, um, you know, you're always going to deal with that position so volatile. So you're always going to deal with nicks and, and bruises. And as we get into this, it all looks great right now. Like, how, how do you handle them all? How do you get them all involved? Well, at some point, one of those guys is going to be banged up and nicked up. And so for us to have that depth is so important for the longevity of our season. Devin mentioned Kamari on Saturday. Yeah. Even with so much better in depth in front of him, is he a guy who... You know, it, you'd love to be able to get him in, but not at, you know, not at the expense, obviously, of of if we are healthy and are, if things are going well, to, to, to lose a red shirt potentially. You know, he's got those four games that he can play in without losing it. And ultimately the health of the other guys and Kamari's ability to keep learning, keep producing, and keep executing will determine how much, you know, true playing time he gets. The offensive line took a lot of heat in general, but it felt like Flax took maybe even more of it specifically. Yeah. How did he respond this offseason? Is there a, is it a true competition? There yeah, oh yeah, Flax, Flax came back. I, I thought he's gotten a lot better. I mean, you see he gets, he does get, he does a great job getting removal in the run game. That's something he's been successful with in, in his past. It's just some of those, hey, one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the past game, no matter who's playing that right tackle position, we've got to feel good about that. We've got to be able to just drop back and be able to throw the ball without using a chip or a screen or some sort of way to alleviate pressure. If we have to do that at times, we will, right? But we've got to be able to get to the point where we can just drop back pass and we don't worry about that right side, right? And that's something that we're still working towards. We're still working towards it. We're still in a competition. Those guys are doing a great job doing everything we ask them to do. But at the end of the day, the best player is going to play, the guy that gives up the less sacks, the guy that gives up the most, the less penetration in the run game, and we can play as five. Sensing a little bit uh, a continuity there developing up front. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I mentioned, we didn't run it too much on Saturday, but we were making some movement calls up front on Saturday. Some of the things were a little unwarranted, but their eyes were in the right spots. They're getting on the same page. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I just it wasn't the emphasis of the day, but it, it wasn't like the run game hurt us by any means. And they were doing what they were asked to do, and we can always be a little bit better. But I am getting, you know. We're getting closer and closer to building real continuity and chemistry up there, and they're all doing a nice job communicating at a high level. Liam, Devin uh, mentioned Lavelle Wright as a guy who stood out to him on Saturday. What has he kind of done this camp, and how has he grown since you've had him here at the, in 21? Yeah, Lavelle's a great kid that just, you know, he's been nicked up, you know, in his career. And 
was nicked up again in this training camp. So I hadn't really seen a ton of Lavelle throughout this training camp. You know, he just kind of got back in the mix. And he's a guy that, you know, when, when you do have to tackle, he, he can be a little bit, he can, he can definitely shine at times. And uh, the more we can get out of Lavelle right, the more he'll play. But that's really more so up to him and his availability and his consistency to be available for us to play, you know, each week. You talked back in the spring about how impressed you were with Marcus Cox right away. Yeah. What has he done to, to make that impression and then how's he going to carry He's so consistent. You know, he's so consistent. His attitude, his effort, the way he comes out every single day, his enthusiasm with the guys. Um, he's fun to be around. He's a fun guy to be around. Uh, he's always smiling, always joking, you know, messing around, but he's serious about football. And he takes it seriously, his approach. Um, he's only been as consistent as he was this spring. That's continued throughout this training camp, and it will continue to do so throughout the fall. I believe that. Liam, you asked a couple of questions last week about Demi, and I'm just curious, given the background that he had with, with Devin, did that make it an easier eval when you're looking at film because he's working along with the side of the guy he'd be playing with here? Yeah, it, it does make it a lot easier, and especially when he was with us this spring, you know, Devin, and, and then you get a feel for Devin as a person, as a competitor, people that he surrounds himself with, trusts, you know, understands is a good player. I believe them. You know, he's the first one to bring it up. So I believe them. And um, at the end of the day, you want to bring pro players in this program that are going to fit the mold, what we're looking for, what we're asking them to do, but also guys that can compete and make plays. That's the ultimate deal, right? So um, I've, I've really been, been happy with Demi. We've thrown a lot on his plate. I mean, a lot. So uh, a little bit swimming over the last two days. Once you get into a game plan, that starts to trim, and he knows exactly what he's going to be working on and what he's going to be asked to do on Saturdays. I know you'll have a certain package, certain game plan per game. Yeah. But do you feel like the guys have caught on to everything you're trying to get in there as of now? Do oh, you yeah. have as much as you want oh. as of now? Have a, we have – more than enough offense to go play a game right now. More than enough. We have, I would say, at least five times, maybe more than we did in the spring from an installation standpoint. And they've handled it. They've handled it. Yesterday, we swam a little bit. Yesterday, coming off the scrimmage, we kind of put a lot on their plates. Mentally, we didn't have as good of a day as we're used to having. It was definitely not the standard, which we're looking for. We tightened it up a little bit today, trimmed it down in terms of some of the inventory and came out and executed at a better level today. So um, the game plan element of training camp, we're not really game planning, right? We're just trying to install, right, as we go. So it's a lot. You know, you'll run something today that you didn't really run since the first day of training camp. That's not what you do in a game plan. So there's a give and take to some of that stuff. Do you enjoy that part as a coach? I know you're not a jump down their throat kind yeah. of guy. Yeah. But, uh, the, the parts of training camp that where they do hit a wall. And totally. Enjoy that, that challenge. Absolutely, man. That's all Coach Stoops has been, you know, preaching to the guys is how do you respond? How do you respond to anything is how you respond to everything. And we had a not so great scrimmage from a point standpoint, right? We'd love to have five, six touchdowns. It didn't play out that way. We had like three, four, three field goals and a couple touchdowns. But then we came out and didn't have a great practice yesterday. Well, what are we gonna do? You know, how do you respond? That is that is truly growth. And that's ultimately why I wanna come back to college football is to be a part of that growth, to see that growth and to help that growth for these kids to reach their highest potential. Coach, what are some of the things that um, you've had to react to, like you are just saying, Coach White's defense this fall? Oh man, it's, it's a pain, man. <laughs> I mean, it's a pain. Brad is hands down one of the, the best coordinators in the country, if not the best. Um, he throws so much at you every play. So if you're just scripting a play against our defense, you have to be ready for odd, oaky, four down, four down over, four down under, jam, pressure from the boundary, pressure from the field, safety pressure, corner pressure. It's a lot. It's a lot. So when you have to just, even just scripting one run play, well, you got to make sure that run has answers for all those defensive looks. That's not easy. And then from a quarterback standpoint, when you just stand back there and they do such a good job of holding rotations, their safeties play on a string, they do a great job of holding rotations in the back end, and it's not easy. So this is great for our offense. Every single day we come out and play our defense because arguably one of the best in the country. Does Saturday kind of represent what his defense is about in yeah. some ways? You, you can feel Bend like you're moving it and it's really hard to... Oh, 
It's a bend but don't break kind of philosophy in a lot of ways, right? I mean, they play deep to short, right? Don't allow a ton of explosives over their heads. And then the red zone, he does a great job of mixing up either blitz, zero blitz, or drop eight. And when you drop eight and you're throwing the ball, man, that's not a lot of places to throw the ball. And then you got Dion, you guys got these guys rushing the passer, and you're holding on the ball with three-man rush. If three-man rush can get home with a drop eight, that's not easy. And so a lot of those things, you got to, hey, we got to be able to run the ball in the red zone against our defense to be able to try to get them out of drop eight to get the box tight to then throw it. It causes problems. I think Saturday was definitely a reflection of how that defense uh, competes on Saturdays. What do you see from Ray Davis, especially the catching the ball out of the back? Ray's got great hands. Ray, Ray has a good feel for the pass game understands leverage, understands space. He's got really good hands out of the backfield, showed it again today in a few things. Um, he, he, Ray's a good player, man. I think he's running the ball really at a high level right now in terms of setting up his blocks, being patient, bursting through the hole. But, uh, you know, our, our whole backfield, you know, can catch the football in space. And ultimately when you're trying to get the guy, you know, your best players the ball in space, it's a good thing when they can catch the ball. I. Yeah, we were here till about 10.30 last night scripting, so he's probably a little annoyed with me right now at the moment. But, uh, yeah, he's done a great job, and I'm just, look at these guys. They're all dead. Middle this is camp. camp, man. This is camp. Here it is. That's the wall. It just hit him right there. <laughs> all right, guys. Anything else? You good? Appreciate it, guys.